Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at Regnum Angelicum from Black Lotus Games, uh, Locust, sorry, Locust Games. Uh, now this is a game for two players, exactly two players, in which each side plays either uh, angels or fallen angels trying to invade the other's kingdom, uh, basically getting to their gate, and get, by getting through the gate, scoring points. Uh, you're going to do this by playing angels out, moving them on the field with generated movement points, uh, playing your either scripts or or you can have uh, pillar cards, which will help you protect yourself, but overall trying to affect the status of the field uh, and use a rock, paper, scissors mechanism in order to win combats. So real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside of this box. We'll see how the game plays and we'll come back at the end and get my opinions on Regnum Angelica. So here you can see the components set up for Regnum Angelica. Now this, as I said, is a two-player card game in which you're trying to bring your angels into the world here, have them progress to Earth, and then move into your opponent's area and eventually get to this spot uh, in order to score points. And you're looking to score 35 points before your opponent can score the same. Now, what you have is a deck of cards here. Each player has a deck of cards, and in this deck of cards are several different types of cards. You have angels. Angels have a strength at the top. This one is strength seven. Uh, and they have a movement allowance, which is two in this case. Uh, furthermore, they're going to have printed abilities that are going to be too small to read, but I'll read a couple of them off. And then they're going to have this, I, uh, I guess you can call it a compass rose of how they deal damage. Uh, so you can see here that to the north or in front of the player, or the angel, uh, this one has water. Uh, to the, I guess it'd be north, I'm trying to think west, uh, fire, northeast is earth, uh, and these repeat in various different locations out onto this card. And each angel will have their own variation on this. So uh, they'll again have, for example, this one is a power of five, movement of two, and different numbers for the icons here for damage. Also in this deck, you are going to have scripts. Uh, scripts are kind of like spells that you can cast in order to affect the game. They have a cost in power, which we'll talk about shortly, but this one costs two power, uh, and it is called Exile. And what this does is it allows you to remove one of your opponent's angels, or fallen angel, from the board, basically, uh, just to get rid of it. And this is very important for some of the, the cards in the game. Uh, other ones might be, for example, a null. So this one is an angelic script that cancels the previous angelic script played. So it's kind of a counter spell uh, if you've played magic before. Or you have liberate, which says that you can move an angel further than you would normally be able to move them. So that movement allowance is no longer in play. The other cards you have in this deck, and the last type of card you have, are called pillars. Uh, they are in the three different elements, so earth, fire, and water, uh, and they can basically add a protective marker to your angel uh, that says that whoever is going to fight you must first beat that element. So they have to beat, for example, earth first before they can beat the normal element that would be in the position that they're attacking you from. Uh, this only works defensively, so uh, it's not protective if you're going after somebody else. Finally, I guess, there is a special angel in each deck that you'll note for its damage uh, has an infinity symbol in every spot. This means that it can't be beaten by any other symbol uh, except for another infinity symbol, which is only present on the very special angel in the other deck. So Beelzebub in the Dark Angel deck or Fallen Angel deck and it's uh, Gabriel in the Light Angel deck. Also, this one limits you to having four power and we haven't talked about power yet, but you'll see what that means shortly. So each player has their own deck of cards that they're using throughout the game. These decks are pretty much identical for both players. At the start of the game, each player is going to have seven cards in their hand. So you'll draw seven cards, and you are prepared to go. Now, on this board, you can see several other things. One, we have a pair of wings here. This pair of wings is scoring markers. So we have a tens column and a ones column, and as you increase your score, this would, for example, be 30 points, or one point. Again, you're going to have a little marker over here on the right-hand side of the board as well. And this is your power marker. You can gain power in several ways throughout the game, uh, most importantly by discarding cards that you can get power from. Uh, but this is going to move up and it's going to allow you to play either the pillar cards or the script cards, which have those power costs. Uh, and furthermore, it's going to dictate how much movement you get in terms of movement, movement cubes at the start of your turn. So, that kind of leads us into how a turn progresses. So let's go ahead and look at one of these cards. We have one right here, actually. 
So this lays it all out for you. First, it lays out the rock, paper, scissors mechanism that is going to dictate how combat is done. We can see that water beats fire, fire beats earth, and earth beats water. Pretty straightforward rock, paper, scissors. Furthermore, it outlines the turn for us. So the first thing you do at the beginning of your turn is you draw movement cubes, and that's these cubes here. You always get a base of one movement cube, and the dark angel always moves first. Uh, so you get one movement cube, and then if you have more than one power, you're going to get movement cubes equal to your power. So uh, zero and one power give you one movement cube. Everything else gives you up to five power, or five movement cubes. Once you've done this, the first thing you have to do, or can, can do, I should say, is play an angel face down into your summoning area. So angels always come in inactive. So for example, let's say we have this angel. It costs us nothing to play him, and we can play him in any one of these five starting spaces. You want to protect these three spaces because these are the only three spaces that an opponent can move into your gate from and score points. So those are the best areas to prevent other players to go to. Once you've played an angel, if you would like, you may activate an angel that is already face down. Now, it can't be the one you just played, so you can't flip this one over, but any other angel from a previous turn, you could. So let's say we're on the second turn for this player. He could now flip this angel over. Now the way that movement works is that you spend these cubes for one point of movement and each angel has their allotted amount of movement. So for example, this one can move up to two. Since I only have one cube, I could spend my one cube and move him one space. Some angels have abilities that break this rule. For example, some have an ability that says for one cube, you may move two spaces. Some have an ability that say you can spend movement cubes in order to gain power. Others might say uh, that they don't have a limit on movement or they don't stop moving when they get into combat. All of the angels have different abilities that affect the gameplay. So, I can move this guy one space. Now, if I had two movement cubes, I could have moved him two spaces because his movement is two, uh, and I could have moved him onto one of the earth spaces in the center of the board. These spaces have numbers on them here, two and one, and when you move and stop on them, you gain that much power. Alternatively, the one in the center has a card on it, and when you land on that one, you draw an extra card to add to your hand. So let's say we had two movement, and I moved him right here, and drew a card, adding it to my hand. Now that we're done with that, we would move on to the next step, which is burning angelic scripts and or pillars for power. So I would look through my hand and see if I have any that I don't want. For example, maybe I'm not interested in a null here. So I could discard this, and it would give me two power. Now this is important because I can spend that power to cast other cards from my hand, like the pillars, which protect me, or to play other script cards. For example, Liberate, which gets rid of the movement restriction on my guys. Or uh, I could play Pi, or P1 maybe, I'm not really sure, but it says that I can add three cards to my hand for one power, or add three to my power pool for no cost, uh, or add three movement cubes for this turn for one power. So it gives me several ways, it must be Pi. Uh, it gives me three of something, one way or the other. So I could try and accumulate enough of this power in order to spend it on other cards. But remember that this also gives you more movement on your future turns. Once you're done with that, you're going to draw at the end of your turn. And as long as you have four or more cards, you're going to draw one card. If you have less than four cards, you will draw up to four. So the last things we really need to cover are combat and scoring. So let's just make up an example of combat here. Let's say that we have these two angels right in front of each other. All right, so this one is a power of one with three movement, and this one is a power of five with two movement. Power is irrelevant unless we have a match on the two symbols of the angels here. So this one is water, and this one is water. Well, that works well. Let's say that the white player is moving into the black player. Bad move, the power of one and the power of five, since the symbols are the same, those two clash, but the power of the black angel is higher, the white angel would die. However, let's try something else. Let's move over uh, to, oh boy, let's move over to here and say that the white player was coming at the black player from this angle, moving diagonally. Now we have water on a power one clashing with fire on a power five. Since water beats fire, the five doesn't matter and the black angel would be killed. Once this player moves here and does that combat, their movement must end. So even if it was their first point of movement, they can't move the other two. But since they landed on this spot, the player would get to draw a card. Now, that's where these protections come in. If instead this had been the scenario where we had water going on fire, but this person had a pillar of earth protecting them, water does not beat earth. So now, if water were to attack earth, earth defends and the white player dies. So this is where the pillars become useful in that they can protect you by forcing the player to first fight this pillar 
before they can fight the player or the angel. Furthermore, pillars give you an extra point if you score. So let's talk about scoring. In order to score, you must move your angel all the way across and into one of these three spaces and finally into the gate at the front of the player's board or at the back if you want to look at it that way. When you do so, you will score points equal to the power of the angel you managed to move across. In this case, this one is five. Additionally, since he had a pillar on him, he's actually a rank six and furthermore scores one extra point when he gets there. So if the fallen angels were able to move this guy all the way across, he'd be removed from the board and he would score six points and is six points towards the 35 he needs in order to win the game. In this manner, you keep playing until one player manages to get to 35 points or until one player's deck runs out. And at that point, whoever has the most points will be the winner. Well, there you have it. That is Regnum Angelica from Black Locust Games. Uh, this is a game that is, first off, beautiful. Uh, the artwork, the components, everything beautifully done in here. Uh, in terms of gameplay, uh, I, I sat down, I've played it several times now, uh, and in going through it, I noticed a couple of things. One, uh, it's, it's balanced pretty well in terms of the overall game. The decks are kind of mirror images of one another. The artwork's different clearly, but they work in the same way. Uh, so you don't really have any, any uh, differentiation based on deck alone. So not one side's not better than the other inherently. Um, the, the script cards uh, are very, very powerful, some of them, and others are just not that interesting at all. So um, Portal, for example, allows you to move one of your guys across the stage in replacement of another guy on the other team. So one angel for a dark angel or vice versa. Uh, this can be very, very powerful. Uh, and so can, for example, just exiling one of your opponent's angels, removing him from the game, gone. Uh, and there is an angel that this is the only real way to deal with him. You can move him around and manipulate him, but each side has uh, kind of their Beelzebub, or I don't remember who the, the light angel is at the moment. Uh, but this angel can't lose to anyone, uh, and so you have to either exile it or remove it from play somehow or just manipulate its space on the board so that it can't move or can't get to the end in order to score points. Because if you don't, it will score points. It doesn't lose to anything. So uh, that part of the game, I'm not sure was really all that intriguing. Having that in there, I, I get the point. He's supposed to be hard to deal with, but most of the time he's going to score unless you draw the right card to stop him. Uh, luckily, he's very slow, so it takes quite a lot of time to move him, and you might be able to draw that card. Uh, so overall, the game is fine. Um, the game is a very straightforward back and forth card game uh, where you're looking to best use strategy and luck in order to draw the right cards and move your guys across in order to get points. Um, the rock, paper, scissors mechanism is, is the core of the game, right? You're trying to make sure that your guys are in positions where they can't be affected by your opponent's visible angels, uh, and at the same time, uh, ensure that you're quickly moving across the board in order to score points. Uh, the protection provided by the pillars is somewhat interesting there, but it's only good defensively, not offensively, uh, and, and also just doesn't change anything. It's still rock, paper, scissors with a lot of... Um, uh, extra things added around it. So uh, overall, just not. It didn't really do it for me. I, I think it's a solid game. Uh, if if you like this type of game or like these types of mechanics, definitely check it out. That is Regnum Angelica from Black Locust Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.